So you may have heard of trauma bonding, trauma bonding from being in a toxic relationship or being with a narcissistic person. And you may have felt what that feels like, but do you understand how it takes place in the first place? What is the process? What are the stages of trauma bonding? My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and heal from toxic people in your life and transform your life after narcissists have been in it. So, okay. First, there is the beginning stage of a relationship with a narcissistic person. Let's just, for example's sake, take narcissistic relationships when it's a romantic relationship. Now, when you meet a narcissist, they will love bomb you, they will give you lots of attention, present lots of familiarity, like you've had the same issues in life or the same struggles. They may even you know, they'll mirror you. All of that love bombing is part of the grooming process. It's part of the process where the narcissistic person pulls people into their life and starts to create what looks like a relationship and starts to get really familiar with you really fast and present you with this person, this mask that they're wearing that says they are so into you. They love you so much. They just can't get enough of you. So this grooming process is the first part, right? It is the love bombing part. The next thing that happens is trust is formed. Trust and dependency is part of the grooming process as well. They will oftentimes start to isolate you now. They will make it seem like it's just you and them, or they will present problems or create feelings of anxiety, feelings of unease, all sorts of discomfort in you through different manipulative tactics, right? And then be the source that fixes it. They will present themselves as the only person in the world that can really be there for you. And when this is going on, when you are feeling like this familiarity, you start to really feel like you are trusting this person, like you love this person, like this person has your back, okay? But then what happens is they start the devaluing. By the time they start the devaluing, you are already believing that they are the source of relieving anything that's wrong in the relationship or relieving anything that you feel wrong in your life. They already have created this dependency upon them for your sense of self, for your sense of well-being. It is a twisted way that they get into your head. Once the devaluing begins, you start to try and fix things in the relationship. You start to focus your whole life on what's wrong with this relationship and how can I make it better? Why is this happening that I am a problem and I am creating a problem for this person? Or you can see that something isn't right in the communication with them. They're starting to shut down. They're starting to not take accountability. They're not really listening when you talk. All of these things start happening, but you spend your time trying to resolve that instead of saying, yeah, okay, no, I'm out right? You try and fix it because that's what we do in relationships is we try to relate. So by this time you are already hooked into the cycle because then what happens is they will start breadcrumbing you with bits of affection, bits of attention. They'll start telling you that they know they're wrong and they should do things and they're going to try and they're going to try really hard if they're a covert narcissist. Basically what I'm saying here is what feels like normal relationships sort of things that are happening are very calculated and very twisted manipulation tactics to create a sense of dependency upon that narcissistic person so that you won't run away and you will continue to give supply and you will continue to be under their control. Narcissists are not in relationships to relate. They're in relationships to control. They are not with you to create a life with you. They're with you to control the life that you have with them. Does that make sense? You guys, when this is starting and when the gaslighting sets in, the confusion that takes place in your emotions kind of overrides your logic. At this point in the game, you're probably trauma bonded. At this point in the, in the whole relationship, you are probably so lost to yourself that it's not so simple as just walk away. Does that make sense? Have you gone through this? Let me know if you are relating to any of this and what has happened. Sh share some stories or give me some examples that have happened to you or if you're in it right now, how can I help you understand better what's going on for you, okay? I mean, enough of this cycle, you start to give up. You give up the fight. You give up thinking it could be any different. You give up believing that it's that person and you start thinking that it's you or you know it's that person. You know they're not gonna change, but you're thinking, 
well, what else can I do? It's not gonna get any better, so I might as well just deal with this, right? And this loss, this loss of self and this loss of feeling like you exist outside the relationship because you can't even remember what it was like to be you. You know what I mean? So here's the thing, if you're trauma bonded to, to a narcissistic person, it's not an easy thing to get away from. So sometimes just understanding a bit about how this process happens and what's gone on in the relationship is enough for one sitting, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna stop here. I encourage you to check out the information in the videos on trauma bonding on this channel because I have a whole lot of them that might help you understand more and get through this. This is the hard part, you guys. This is the really, really tough decision, choice, and action to leave a narcissistic person when you're feeling these trauma bonds.